So I'm just taking a little review of the discussions of our previous, all the contents and the sessions we have covered. So as this is basically a physics of semiconductor level, basically what exactly the physical phenomena inside it. We are not basically whenever we have a device, whenever we have a characteristic, wherever we have a certain uh, like objects, it has basically two aspects. Number one aspect, what exactly it is going to do? What is it is going to do? And the second aspect is what it's working and functioning, which is called its behaviorist response. And third thing, which is most important, physical phenomena associated within it and because of it. What exactly inside the phenomena is persisting? So that's important. And as this particular contents, we are discussing about basically the physics of each and every uh, device, each and every effect, each and every phenomena. So that's very important here. So let's discuss today's uh, topic, which is the transistors. And before that, we have already discussed about the energy band gap diagram of the semiconductors. We have talked about basically alloys and the compounds of semiconductor. We talked about basically how the PN junction diodes and the two different kind of semiconductor meets with each other. Then what effects come in their energy band gap diagram that all discussions we have already carried out. So finally, now we are proceeding and moving towards the transistors. It's a very common, it's not a new one. So what exactly we are going to discuss today is what is the transistor? A little history, which is not, not much important about that because anyone can easily have it on accessing through the internet types characteristic and application so let's see this kind of a structure generally we see in our devices in our materials in our boards that exactly the three terminal device is called as a uh, transistor and as we go for the bifurcation of the name of the transistor bifurcation represents that transistor is nothing but a transfer register it means which transfers a signal from a low resistance to high resistance. This is exactly the meaning of. So if somebody asks to you why we call it as a transistor, transistor, it is a breakup of two sentences, transfer plus registers. So take care about that transfer and registers. So all the phenomena are associated with the transistor is related with this one we are going to discuss. So let's uh, read out a few points. Semiconductors ability to change from conductor to insulator that we know can either allow current or prohibit current to flow exactly the common point useful as a switch but also as an amplifier so before that we discussed about the diodes and the diodes were completely used as a switch we were talking only like a diode they were behaving like a switch but here other than switch we have certain application which is the amplification so that's more important one has to talk about it one has to take care about it what exactly the amplification means so this amplification is representing simply a process of boosting a signal so when you have a weak signal suppose that my sound is in this particular system is here and that is being recorded and that is being propagated all over so it is it sufficient voice that my voice is very sufficient that is capable to reach everywhere no it requires a large number of a amplifiers and that amplifiers will be working at the different stage in the different mode in the different uh, sections in the segments so that the adequacy of the power of the voice must be. so this is exactly so we are talking about the amplification essential part of many technological advances so right now if we see any board if you just open up your laptop you open up your mobile phone all the electronics component and devices you do have in all you find this one as a main component this is exactly the transistor so not i'm going to much about this history that's available everywhere so before transistor we were using the vacuum tube that is known to all of us so now we have a target to understand what exactly the transistor. So first of all as we talked about a diode same kind of a process being happened within the transistor also very same process but here, instead of making combination of two type of semiconductor, that is P or N, we are making a combination of two different type of semiconductor in different mode, like a P with two N or a N with two. It means not one P and one N. Now we have a combination of one P or two N or 
two p with one n. How it can be done? It's done like a sandwich type of a structure. Generally, we have a sandwich. We have a one layer of bread, another layer of bread, and then in between you are just having a filling. And this is like third is one type of material is here. Another type of material is here. In between you are using one type and same type of material. In between using another type of material. This sandwich like a structure. We have in the case of the trunk. Very well known common trunk. And how it is being created? It's not like created that we are creating one sheet, then second sheet, and making a sandwich. It's not like that. It is like a sandwich, but the formation and the generation and the fabrication process is not like the same. What we do? Generally, we have a one type of semiconductor. We know that diffused with another type, then diffused with another type. So that kind of a diffusion process in a substrate, we diffuse acceptor and donor, and then create such kind of a. So see what structure we have. So as I told you in this session that if you are trying to make a transistor, so if you are thinking about the layout of transistor, so the layout basically having one type of semiconductor in between the another type of. Semiconductor. Here we have just taken this end. And taken this end, and in between that we have just taken a small section of. So the in between material is basically a low thickness. This is of like low thickness, and this is of high thickness material. So this high thickness and high thickness in between is a low thickness that is here. So this looks like this transistor. So who is going to make this transistor? So most important part. So once we are creating this one. It requires one material side type of semiconductor, another a same type of semiconductor on this side, and in between another type. So that kind of a structure is called NPN. It's a common one. And while we are making, what is the concept behind that? Because see, whenever we are doing something, we should have something and some reason behind that. And always we should find out three Ws: why, what, and where. So let's first of all talk about why we are doing it. We had already a PN junction diode, and that was working like a switch. Now, what is the need of creating PN and PN? It means additionally you are creating one more layer. What could be the reason behind it, and why we are doing? It? So this is just only to say that here by doing this, you are creating more variation, more bandwidth of control by creating such situation. You are trying. Actually, nothing you are doing. You are having an n-type material, a simply n-type material, and in between that, you are inserting another p-type material, so that this n-type material will have a control. It's a very similar type of theory. Like you have all the people in your home, like you, and like all the students are. Just taking a very simple example, all the students are there in a class, and among them, a student is one teacher. So all the phenomena associated with the student within the class, their movement, their talks, their chats, is basically controlled through what one instructor, one teacher is there who is taking care of all these activities. Similarly, we have an n-type material, and n-type material has a phenomena that it has electrons as a majority charge carriers, it has holes as minority charge carriers, and to just control this phenomena. Within this n-type material, we have inserted a small strip of p, so that now we have a better control of this. And because of that, we have created basically the three terminals in the transistor, which is called as emitter. This emitter is related with the word emission. When we have emission, emission means to just make it out. When the things comes out, called as emitter. Second. Is called as a base, and third is called as a collector. So here we have emitter. Here we have a collector. Emitter emits charge carriers. Collector collects charge carriers, and base is basically a terminal who controls the movement of charge carrier from emitter to collector. This is exactly the basic fundamental systematic understanding of a transistor. That exactly the important. Also, this uh, particular is uh, might be very much clear. So, session is open. If somebody is feeling something to ask, in the same one, if we come up here and we see 
that emitter, base, and collector. If we see here, so that should have a certain movement. Movement, it means charge carrier's movement should be there. And how this charge carrier movement should be taken? Because it has to be connected with the external. As we were talking about in the case of the PN junction diode, in the PN junction diode, we have same thing like connecting it to forward bias, connecting it to the reverse bias. Connection forward to reverse makes this diode working as a on switch and off switch. So same thing happens here. To just make this transistor on and transistor off, we need to connect it with the external circuitry. So that external circuitry is connected here. Generally, generally, it's an important line, take care about it. Generally, to make transistor functional, we make such arrangement of external circuit. Generally, to make transistor functional, we make external circuitry in such a way that emitter must emit electrons and collector must collect electrons in PNP, NPN. Why in PNP? Emitter must emit holes and collector must collect holes. Actually, whatever the charge carriers are there in emitter that must be emitted in such a way that it will be collected by the collector. So we have to make that arrangement here in this outer circuitry so that this phenomenon should be maintained. Like emitter always emits and collector always can emit. collect whatever the charge, whether it is electron or hole, whether it is NPN, whether it is PPNP. This is exactly the second important aspect. So well, uh, here, this is exactly my motive to make you understand that we have emitter base collector and to make it functional emitter should emit collector should collect and base has a certain different application that we are going to discuss within this work so let's move on towards this working so first of all we see here what kind of a transistor and what kind of a symbols may be here that is not a new one that's well known to you so if you see this is the npn structure this looks like this one and the significance which tells us that this one and this one is definitely indicated by this difference. So this is a symbol. And if it is NPN, this is PNP. This is only deferred by this one. This. And it's very easy to understand. Very, very easy to understand. Sometimes it happens like we forget. Like a whether it is going in or going coming out. So nothing is spatial. Just think upon. If it is NPN. So what is the part of emitter? Emitter has N, that means electrons. And what should happen? Electron should come, uh, make out from emitter section to reach to collector. It means this should be the flow, emitter to collector. So electrons are moving from emitter to collector. What should be the direction of current? Current direction should be opposite. So here we have emitter. I'm sorry, this is the collector, here is the emitter. If electrons are moving from emitter to collector, emitter to collector. So when electrons are moving emitter to collector, then current should be opposite collector to emitter. You see here, the current is opposite collector to emitter. That's why this arrow shows collector to emitter, outside arrow. And same thing happens, holes should move on from where? Emitter to collector. So they are also moving in the direction emitter to collector, but we know that. The movement of hole as well as the movement of current is same. So here it shows that current. So if it is P and P, it's a very simple. So what is on E terminal? E terminal is filled up of P. And P is moving towards base. They are moving towards base, current is moving towards. If this P electrons are there, if they are moving towards space, current is just in place. Just to remember, this is a simple notation and always need to be remembered like that. NPN. So coming up BZT NPN transistor, and finally we have certain kind of configurations are here. So let's check it out and its correctness. So before going to understand this correctness is going to help us how it is going to work on. As I told you, we want to make this active. If you wanted to make this active, you see here this is a E terminal, this is a C terminal, this is the B terminal. 
And if you see this arrow, this arrow is indicating the current is reaching towards. What kind of it is? You see, this tells us if current is inside, it is going from ammeter. This is representing the charge carriers are moving in, obviously, and definitely the elect ah, current is moving in. It means this shows this is the PNP. This is exactly. So that's a symbol. You can take an example from. So this PNP indicates current is coming inside. So this is the symbol. So we have PNP. So this terminal is P, this terminal is N, this terminal is P. And we want to make it like that it should follow the rule. Charge carrier should emit from emitter. So what we have to connect, so this is the P terminal. And when P terminal is connected with the positive, so they will be reflected and moving towards junction like that. If it is this like that, what you have to do in this case, if this is NBN, you have to connect here in this N terminal negative. So the electron will get reflected, moved toward. If it is PNP, so here we have to connect. The same things we are doing here. So we are connecting this with the positive one, holes reflected. And the collector needs to collect. It means it should maintain the flow from emitter to collector. So that's why we are connecting it with the negative. And this is to be maintained at the common potential or the ground potential. Now, if suppose this potential is providing a movement of charge carrier, then what happens exactly? Let's, you know, let's see this. So under this situation, when electron starts moving towards the junction, now the junction has basically two depletion phases. One at NP and second PN. You see here, this NP junction is always made forward by. Remember what I'm saying? I'm saying that this NP, it means emitter base junction is always forward biased. So you have to go for this base emitter junction is forward by. And collector base junction is always reverse biased. So what we are having? So these electrons are reaching here and these electrons have no barrier and they can easily be injected from N to P. That is done. Then what happens once they reaches to the P, but the base is too small and they losses their energy. Few of electrons, few of electrons may lose their energy and comes to valency band and P has a majority charge carrier holes. So they have a chance to recombine they have a chance to recombine. So electrons, again I'm repeating, electrons starts moving, they injected in P, and when they injected in P, they have a loss of energy, they come from conduction to valency band and recombine with the hole. Only because this is a very thin surface, only two to five percent. If suppose we have hundred of electrons, an example, if you have 100 of electrons moving from N to P, only two to five percent, two or five electrons may recombine with this P, rest moves towards this one. And when they reaches to this one, they will be collected by them. Collected, keep on collecting them. So by this process, if you see here, if anyhow we can change the concentration by varying the uh, current, by varying any kind of a field effect here in this P terminal, we can change this 2%, 2.5%, 5%, 3%, 1%. So we can change this recombination rate here. And as we change the recombination rate, obviously the total current which will be flowing from here to here will be affected. As much as recombination will be here, this recombination will changes the carrier concentration will be reaching here. This is exactly the main phenomenon. So what we have, we have basically three terminal. So one terminal is emitter, another is collector, and third terminal is a base terminal. And this base terminal, we are creating such situation that it is providing a current. A current is deciding recombination rate. And as the recombination rate increases, current decreases. This is exactly the utility of this. If we see the same thing to character state, First of all, we talk about the input characteristic. Input characteristic, it means the input voltage we are providing and 
with respect to that current. So we see here what is the input voltage. We are having input voltages V, B, E, E, and B, the voltage between these two. So it is E B characteristic. And what is the current at the side? We have a current I. So we see here I and V B. So we are making here I and V B input current, input voltage, and create this input characteristic. So you check it here, this input characteristics very same as we have in the case of normal. And that should be because P in junction is forward by C. So it is showing like a forward by C. Now, but this characteristic is depending on what? This characteristic is depending upon CB. What is VCB? Voltage between collector and voltage B. So as we change this voltage CB, and 20 volt, 10 volt, 1 volt, we increase or decrease, the characteristic will have a shift depending upon this. So lowering the CV will have low value of I, making it higher, obviously it has a, because this CV voltage is a positive voltage and positive voltage will have a attraction and this attraction is providing because CV is some sort of a drop. So this voltage is deciding that whether this characteristic is going to have a more value of I or not. This is exactly the moment. So that happens as an input characteristic. Similarly, we may have an output characteristic of a transistor too. Output characteristic we see here, we have the CB voltage and we have IC. So IC, this characteristic shows that IC is here and here we have a VCB. As we increase this VCB, Initially, take this one. Only don't think of one, two, three, four, all characters. Just only think of this one. Initially, this shows the current rises, but the voltage drop does not rise. Current rises, this drop does not rise, then it becomes saturated. This shows that initially, this collector has a certain voltage. If you increase this voltage, it means you're attracting because this is the whole, just take an example. This is an electron and it is connected with the positive, attracting electrons, so attracting these electrons too. So initially, when you increase the voltage, initially the current increases because more charge carriers will be reaching here. And when more charge carriers will be reaching, obviously current increases. But once, if we have a thousand of charge carriers here and all except only those recombining here, among them, 995 charge carrier will be reaching here then current become constant. No increase in charge carrier, then definitely no increase in current. So that's why this shows. But if anyhow you are increasing charge carriers, this shows IE current increases, it means charge carrier increases. If you increase charge carrier concentration, you can have a more high values of IC. This is exactly the output current. Well, this shows complete functioning how this input is behaving and how this output is behaving. In a concluding remark, I can say that, that this VBE decide number of charge carriers injecting towards uh, basically collector section. And the collector voltage decide how much IC current will be flowing. This is exactly the motive of understanding of this. So this is exactly the main functioning of this transistor. How it works. So we see here this base current, this VBE voltage is deciding more recombination or less recombination. And by this, we can control the current from ammeter to collector. So now the session is open. If somebody feels like that, can raise up their queries. So we can ammeter se charge carriers nickname of a charge carrier base se hokar enter the phone. अब इस सब के बीच में हमारा जो फिनोमेना है वो ये है कि यहां से अगर 1000 चार्ज कैरियर्स यहां 1000 पहुंचेंगे तो 1000 करंट होगा 900 के आसपास पहुंचेंगे तो उसी के रिस्पेक्टिव करंट होगा 500 पहुंचेंगे तो उसी के रिस्पेक्टिव करंट अब कौन इनको कंट्रोल कर रहा है कंट्रोल करता है इनको सबसे पहले यहां पे कितने चार्ज कैरियर्स वो कौन डिसाइड करेगा जो पे और कौन डिसाइड करेगा जो वोल्टेज है क्योंकि वो कोवेलेंट बॉन्ड्स को तोड़े ब्रेक करेगा Second, यहाँ पर बेस पर जब ये चार्ज कैरियर्स निकल के जाएंगे क्योंकि ये n है और ये p है तो यहाँ होल्स हैं 
ये होल्स इसको रिकॉम्बाइन करने की कोशिश करेगा तो रिकॉम्बिनेशन रेट किस पे डिपेंड करेगा वो एसी वोल्टेज पे डिपेंड करेगा कि वीबी के बीच में कितना वोल्टेज का ड्रॉप है कितना वोल्टेज आपने अप्लाई किया है तो नंबर ऑफ कॉन्सेंट्रेशन कितनी होगी यहाँ पे चार्ज कैरियर की जो कलेक्टर पे पहुंचेगी ये बेस पर और किस पर डिपेंड करेगी ये डिपेंड करेगी इस पर कि कितने चार्ज कैरियर अमित हुए ठीक है सो वंस दे विल बी जब ये यहाँ से स्टार्ट करेंगे सपोज इसमें से सौ निकले सौ में से पांच यहाँ पर रिकॉम्बाइन हो गए नाइनटी फाइव 95 आउटर सर्किट में घूम गए करंट हमें आईसी अब हुआ क्या हमने जब यहाँ पर इस वोल्टेज बीबी को यानी इनपुट वोल्टेज को चेंज किया आई करंट को चेंज किया तो चार्ज कैरियर्स बढ़े 95 की जगह 97 करंट चेंज हो गई इलेक्टर पे हम ऐसा वोल्टेज लगाते हैं जो इन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स को अट्रैक्ट करे अट्रैक्ट करने से क्या होगा कि चार्ज कैरियर नाइमीटर से करेंगे स्टार्टिंग में जब हम वोल्टेज बढ़ाते हैं तब तो चार्ज कैरियर एकदम से उतर की तरफ जाना शुरू लेकिन जब एक बार सारे चार्ज कैरियर जाने लगते हैं हमारा करंट जो होता है वो तो डिपेंड करता है ना क्यू इक्वल्स टू एनी और आई इक्वल्स टू डी क्यू अपॉन डी टी यानी रेट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ चार्ज जब चार्ज कैरियर ही नहीं बढ़ेंगे तो रेट ऑफ चेंज भी नहीं बढ़ेगा तो वो कांस्टेंट है अब इस कॉन्स्टेंट करंट को कैसे बढ़ाया जा सकता है चार्ज कैरियर चार्ज कैरियर कैसे इंक्रीज होंगे आई करेंट को बढ़ा तो इसीलिए जो हमने कर्व लिए थे कर्व हमें रिप्रेजेंट करते हैं कि यहाँ पर जो वैल्यू है आई की वो इंक्रीज होगी इसकी वजह से और यहां पर आई की वजह से ये आउटपुट करेंट ठीक है दैट्स व्हाट एग्जैक्टली द डाटा